but pri- you know, I remember, I'm, I'm born 1971, so I remember what the city used to look like and smell like. There were areas of town that sm- smell totally different now. You know, like I remember the old breweries that were out by Arbutus and Broadway. There was a Carling O'Keefe brewery there. So anytime you went by there in the morning, it just stank of hops. Uh, it, like it was really heavy air, you know, like that's all gone now. If you walk over the Granville Street Bridge as a kid, I remember looking down, you'd see log booms from the forestry industry that was at it. Like now you wouldn't see that. There's million dollar condos on those shores. Was Bruno Garussi on any of the logs? <laughs> yeah, it didn't relic from beachcombers. That's right. It could have been, you know, that, that, <laughs> that whole beachcombers thing felt very, pre- you know, that, that was the industry out here. So Danger yeah, all that stuff, you know, it was, it was much more, uh, it was very maritime. It still is, but it's, you know, the, the urbanism of Vancouver has grown so much and the city's changed so much that uh, those changes were a little bit bound to happen. And some of those changes, when you really start looking at some things, you know, the west end of Vancouver is a very famous area because of all the apartment buildings and the density down there. You know, th- yeah. that changed in the 1960s. So, you know, the downtown was changing even then. Um, and anyway, so some people, it, it's, very, it's, a very to- it's a big topic of conversation here in town. You know, what was the, you know, the best time to be alive in Vancouver? And it's and inevitably everybody's, it's their own youth is, is what they, nostalgic excuse me, nostalgically look back at. Um, but with all those changes, they're changed in the, in the nightclub, in the venue scene. You know, in the 1960s and through the 70s, Hornby Street, which is now, if you go down to Hornby Street, there's High Steakhouse there and some bank towers. But that used to be where all the clubs were. Um, the Cave was there, Misty's, uh, 12 Caesars, the Living Room, uh, the Body Shop, all these old nightclubs that used to be around that used to have bands uh, come through it, and, and, you know, and... and that change, real estate started to change that. So the nightclub starts to shift, you know, not long after that, the rise of Gastown uh, neighborhood happens. You Define know? Gastown for, is, the, it, Gastown a, is Town it a is town it, full of gas? It's what, not, it, what yeah, it? I should. You got a steam it, clock. It, yeah, this famous steam clock. If you come to Vancouver and you hear about Gastown, Gastown sort of where the city, quote unquote, began. And it's, and it's, the funny thing is, it's old, but it's only so old because the way it was created with the brick streets and that was all, in the 1970s. It wasn't like that. It hasn't been this preserved Edwardian corner of the... You know, that's a little bit for the tourists. There's an alleyway there called Blood Alley, and people think, why, was there butcher shops there or somebody killed? No, they just the, the architect that was supervising the renovation of Gastown just thought it'd be a great name. For, for you know. So we have sometimes... A, you know, Vancouver's a very young city, you know, in that sense. Um, so, as, and as I say, the, the changes that have happened in Vancouver have happened before your very eyes. So, and it, that's what makes it kind of unique, you know, but, but with all those changes, as the city's grown, you've also seen big changes in the music industry, so it's been a complete shift. So there's very few clubs, as, we, as we're talking about, you know, Commodore Ballroom being one. You know, the Vogue is still, but the Vogue didn't used to always have bands. It was kind of like a place where Stomp, you know, would happen, or the sort of musical productions and things like that. It's only more in recent years it's become, that's become a show. There's new clubs that have arisen, and new venues like the Rickshaw Theater and the Imperial and... Some places like that, the Biltmore still around, even though the Biltmore was a biker bar in the seventies. Um, but it's it, it's been interesting to watch. And and some people ask me, you know, is it are are is that is the great era of live music over? Is rock and roll dead now? And with these all these clubs gone, and and I, I don't think so. I think I think there's there's always ebbs and flows of these things. Um, and I think there's what I found interesting is in. Some of the stuff that's happening in town is actually happening in places, some of these places off the map. There's a place called 333 Clark, which is called 333, but it just, it just shut down, is another example, because the, it was in an old sort of mechanics uh, building, but they were doing like hardcore shows in there. Um, there's a place just up the road from us here called the Clubhouse uh, that's done, it's, it's in this warehouse. And I walked in there and it was packed and I couldn't believe like, God, there's all these millennials watching live music. I, I almost- On I, their I, phone. I, I, yeah. <laughs> no, they were actually watching, they were taking some pictures, but- they were actually there and, and, and watching it and present, and, and a tear almost came to my eye, thinking, like, this is exactly... Well, they were judging music. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was cool to see. So some of it's, some of it's kind of receded underground, which yeah, maybe yeah. is good for it, you know, that it goes underground a little bit again, so then it comes back with a, with, so with a vengeance. You go, you go uh, I mean, this is book number four. Yes. Right? So walk me through the process. So you, you start uh, with the penthouse, correct? Started with a book on the penthouse nightclub called Liquor, Lust, and the Law in 2012. That is this, came a, up. Is this a you idea, or is this uh, is this based on your local knowledge of the city? Arsenal comes to you and says, "Hey, do you want to do this?" That was a weird thing. I, you know, I I was I was writing 
on the side, I kind of enjoyed writing. On tour, I would sometimes like write an article and email it back to Vancouver to maybe somebody who might run it in a, in a you know, whether it was in a And fancy. when you were on tour, they didn't have email. So that was a whole. <laughs> it was a whole other thing. That it was, was, it was tricky thing. to do, you know, like. Um, and I had written a, an article for the Vancouver Courier about the penthouse. And the penthouse is a sort of notorious place that goes back decades in Vancouver. And it has this really wild history going back to the 30s and 40s. Um, but the, and the, and not, famously, there was a murder next door there in 1983 of Joe Filipponi, who was the patriarch of the Filipponi family and started the penthouse, who got... Hence the, hence the soprano tag. So the, hence the soprano tag. And, and uh, you know, the, the, that murder has always been sort of a, a long shadow cast over the family. And, and, but I didn't get into that. I got into it in an article, but I didn't start with it. And I got into other things that I thought were, quite frankly, more interesting. And Danny Filipponi, the, who's the, who's the uh, nephew of... Joe Filipponi and the son of Ross Filipponi, who on, runs that place now, really liked it and thought it was really well written and also sort of showcased the history of that place in a really fair way. Because I thought some of the things that had been said about the place, and it wasn't really true, you know, it was just the sort of, the real, the truth is actually even better than some of the made up stuff or the, so the rumors that, that, that people have. So I wrote that book and it came out in 2012. I guess I signed on to do it at the end of 2011. And it was a huge success, you know, here in town and, and, uh, got nominated for BC Book Prize and, and the whole, it was great. You know, so I suddenly was sort of showing up. I was getting, I used to get recognized at record stores, but now I get recognized at bookstores. There it is. And, and, and it was kind of like this whole other angle of, that was suddenly kind of opened up for me. So after that, I thought I'm going to do, you know, some of this was easy stuff to me because I thought no one, no one has ever written a book about the penalties before. This seems, I'm going to do a book about the Commodore. Nobody's written a book about that, you know, like. And I was probably well-placed to do that with some of the relationships I had with some of the people that ran it. Um, and that, uh, did just as well, you know, like, so sometimes the, the, the book writing thing, I think is like maybe the movie industry. If you have a success, they'll let you do it again, you know, but if you have a flop, it's over. May, maybe it's over, you know, like, uh, why do they keep letting our band? Yeah. <laughs> so in the wake of that, I thought I wanted to mix it up. And there was this, this true crime story, which I had always been fascinated by. And I had written an article about that too, that was sort of a dress rehearsal for the book. And that was a book that eventually became called The Last Gang in Town. And it's a story about, a true story about East Vancouver street gangs in the 1970s and what the Vancouver Police Department did to combat them in a secret gang squad that they put together to aggressively, which, you know, in quotes, beat up some of these gangs. And this was a tough, that was a tough book for you to research. Yes. Oh, right? yeah. There was and, some... and, and I got some calls from people that wanted to know why I was poking around right. into this or, or, you know, there were some, Concerns from the, uh, let's say the, the lads that ride motorcycles for a living and have the the things on, the, the the things emblazoned on the back of their leather jackets, and uh, but I managed to sort of I think sort of negotiate uh, my way through that and it was the funny thing was uh, in the wake of that book coming out I heard from all these old retired police officers that say hey everybody got the book for Christmas and everybody really liked it. And then I also heard from some of the bikers that everybody got the book for Christmas. They all liked it. Those so are the Shriners? The, the, the Shriners. Yes, they are the Shriners. Yes, that, that, that'd be safe to say who they are. But, but I think, you know, it, it, it sort of, I didn't pick sides. And I, I tried to illustrate that life was just different back then for both sides of the law. And it struck a chord with people because I think people had heard about those, those gangs, like the Clark Park gang and some of the ones I name in the book that... Uh, but had never read anything concrete about them or wanted to know a fact from fiction. And that was, and that, that sort of ended up being it. So uh, that was a, that was a, a real bonus too. So I thought it, uh, there'd been, it had been an idea for me for a while to do a book maybe on the clubs in town. You know, the, the penthouse is still around and the, and the Commodore is still around. What about tackling something about the clubs that are no longer here and why they are gone? Because if you talk to people in Vancouver, everybody remembers a place they used to go to that's gone. Now, because the city has changed so much, along with the music industry. And every generation uh, talks about, while your grandparents might talk about here in town, if they, if they lived here, grew up here a little bit, they might talk about these old places like the Cave and Izzy's and Oil Can Harry's, all these old great names for clubs they used to have. Whereas the grandchildren might remember Love Affair or Gracelands or, or, some, or the Town Pump or Richards on Richards uh, that, they, that they went to. So it's a funny thing. There's almost a thread through everybody who's lived here who remembers a, a fun night spot they went to that's gone now, either because there's a condo development there now and the city and that whole block has changed or, you know, for one reason or another, sometimes actually these, some of the places are still around. Well, I'm, you know, like, and I, I'm, 
every town is going to have that. For sure. It just seemed to really, I mean, we touched on it a bit earlier, but it just seemed to really expedite here. It sure like, did. You know, and... and you know, uh, I, I, like, exactly like you say. I mean... Because the, the, the Horseshoe's still in Toronto. Lee's is still in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I think Even Ridley the Elma Combo is, is still in Toronto. Ridley and that's been and, shuttered for years. And it's just been sort of mothballed, waiting to come back any day now. You know, New York lost CBGBs. Uh, uh, there's, lo- there's clubs in Los Angeles. Same t- The big towns that no longer have that place that everybody talked about in this sort of these mythical places where these bands came through. And that's what makes the Commodore, you know, so interesting. Or even the penthouse, because there's so many people that, of well, showbiz people that went in there just to hang out, you know, like. Um, and when we lose those places, it's not so much that the, that the stars went there. It's, it's where we as people in the city went to. And that's where we met. And that's where there's very few places in Vancouver that are cross-generational places where your grandparents went to, your parents went to, and you could go to. You can count them on one hand. Stanley Park, the P&E, the Orpheum, the Commodore, even the penthouse in a, in a, in a weird way, you know. But after that, it, I, I challenge you to sort of start dropping off. You know, it's really hard to sort of think of, you know. Thanks for stopping by, friends, to the Brenton on Tour podcast channel on YouTube. Coffee, music, travel, life, all of those things, one page, lots of guests, lots of chatter. We talk about all of it. If you like it, subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment. I'll get back to you. Thanks, friends. See you next time.